there's one. There's one. There we go. Okay, spinnerbait fish. Spinnerbait time. He came up and gabbed that thing. Hey, he's not a particularly big fish, but there are big fish out here. You know, we're talking about Lake Okeechobee. We're talking about these are just a pound and a half, two pound bass, but hey, there's five and six and seven pound fish here. And he ate that thing down all the way. That's a matter of finding the shad. Now see, one of the problems is that we started out up there, we didn't see any shad moving. So that was kind of an issue. Uh, let me get this, this bait out. I can't get it. I got it right now. Okay. Okay. Let's see what happens with this guy. I want to drop back. And I was just, he was just inside the grass, just a little ways. Oh, there's another shad right here. I just saw a shad move. I'm going to power down. The only thing, when you find a fish, and there was another one that broke, I just saw a shad break. It's, it pays to stop, power pole down. And sometimes you'll get three and four and five in a row. It's important to have power poles. Power poles are so important in this shallow water, particularly when you catch that first fish. And, you know, yeah, you might just catch a single, but if there's a school of fish there, you need to stop right now. And that's really, really important to have a power pole system like this one, where I can get just in a couple feet, couple seconds, I'll be, uh, be ready to go. I saw one break right there. It's a beautiful morning. It's just what you want. It's just the perfect, perfect complement for, for, for the shad spawn. Now, I don't know if they're actually, shad are actually spawning, they're just bass in this grass as well. And there's schools of bass, whether they're, the shad are here now or not, I don't know, the bass are here. They're just a little reluctant. What takes, what really takes precedence on everything, when, when the shad do come by, they get fired up and that's when they bite too good. Right now, there's not a lot of shad getting them fired up, and they're, 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 not, they're kind of lethargic. They're just laying around in here. And they're not biting real good. But when the shad do show up, and they get in a feeding frenzy, son, hold on to your hat. Things are going to happen. There's one. I got one. I got one. A good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, son. I got a good one. Yes, sir. What we got, son? I got a good bass. That's what it's talking about. That's what we're talking about, son. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Yes, sir, son. Yes, sir. The shad spawn is on. The shad spawn is on. Come down with the trolling motor. The, oh, yeah. He's not real big, but you know, he fought good. You know, at 70 something degrees, these bass really fight good. You know, I thought. If I had lost him, it's funny. It's just the way, it, it's a kind of a light rod. I would have thought it was five pounds. But he's a shad, a shad fish, nevertheless. And what I did to catch him, I was using this spinnerbait again. That's real thick grass. This is the thickest grass we've found so far. It's got some real good cover. And because of the sunny day, I guess they're just uh, trying to find as much cover as they can. You know, bass have non-eyelidded eyes. They can't close their eyes. So they're gonna try to seek out some heavier cover when they can. Okay. And how I caught that fish, I threw it back into the grass, just a couple feet, and right just when it came over to the edge, right there, he hit it right on the edge. So you don't make a big splash Kind of a quiet presentation. Kind of, it's hard to get that spinnerbait through that heavy stuff to come right. There. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Yes, sir, son. That's a good deal. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Now we're talking. Shad time. Big old bass. I tell you, folks, that's a decent bass. Yeah, a couple three pounds now. But see what I did? I dropped that spinnerbait down. Now that's a whole big deal is, is, the, is killing it at the, at the, right at the weed line. Beautiful, beautiful fat bass, just as healthy as can be. One of my Roland Martin spinner baits. Whew. 
we moved about three fish. I had only caught one and had two more bites and had a couple more to, to swirl. So that's not real good. We have to find more fish than that. That's really not a good school. But they get out here good and good schools. I mean, sometimes, hey, sometimes when you get out here, you can catch 10 in a row. You can catch your whole limit just right off the bat. I mean, they get thick. They get thick out here. Whole schools of them. I keep my rod in the strike position because this is the lure that you want to strike. The second he hits, you gotta, you got to hit him. Because particularly in that grass, you got to come out with him. You can't, you can't play around in this grass. And it could only be a three pound bass, but if, if, the, if a three pounder gets in that grass in the right fashion, you have a hard time getting them out. It's just real hard. Oh, it's a big one. Oh yeah, big one. Big one. Big one, big, big one, big one. Big fish. Oh yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. They go four and five and six pound bass. That's the deal. Big old bass, yes sir. That's the kind of fish that we get in this place. Big old giant bass. That's a good one, son. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Let me just have to show you what I got here. What a beautiful bass, though. That's a big trophy bass. Big as can be. That's what that's what Okeechobee's named name for. Big giant fish like this. Now folks, that is a good bass. That is a great big, probably a seven-pound bass. Just a beautiful, beautiful fish. And he hit that spinnerbait. One of my creations, the Roland Martin spinnerbait, a beautiful fish. So I tell you, I'm going to show you a few things about, about what I'm using, but that's the kind of fish you can expect to catch. You come out here on Lake Okeechobee, and particularly these outside, uh, outside areas, we're on the reef right now. Big old six and seven pound bass are pretty much an everyday occurrence. I'm going to release him to be caught again another day. Okay, boys, that's it. Now, let me just show you a few things what I'm using today. Well, let me just show you the kind of spinnerbait that I'm using today. I'm using a Roland Martin Big Bass spinnerbait. And what it is, is when we made these spinnerbaits, we, what we had in mind was heavy duty fish and heavy cover. So we have this real big heavy wire. And it's, it's not just an R bend, it's just a regular, it's a regular twist bend, nice big blade. And it has, uh, this, this particular model has kind of a swivel deal. And basically, I'm just, you know, you saw what I was doing, I'm just kind of slow rolling it. For a rod and reel compliment, I'm old school. I like monofilament. This happens to be 20 pound monofilament, and it does a good job, it's just right. And it's a fairly light rod, but with the 20 pound monofilament, it does perfect. Okay, now let me show you the backup, because you know, so many times you miss a fish on a spinnerbait or a chatterbait or whatever, and you gotta have a backup Senko. And I showed you that, that's a 3 16 ounce weight, that's 50 pound test braid. That's a 4 aught EWG uh, Gamagatsu hook, and of course the, the venerable 5-inch 297 Green Pumpkin Senko. That's the number one bait in my mind ever. And I'm matching it up with, again, these are Solace Reels, my favorite, and uh, this happens to be a 50-pound braid, and this is a, a, a favorite rod as well. That's, that's my worm system. Okay. The one thing they didn't hit that they normally hit, it's normally the best lure out here, is a swim jig. And I don't know why they didn't bite the swim jig today, but when they're chasing shad, that swim jig in the 5 16 ounce size, white with a white Seiko, you can't beat it when they're chasing shad, but they just weren't chasing shad again. Again, I'm throwing that on 50 pound braid, a, a, a solace 8 to 1 ratio reel, and a nice favorite uh, Emperor Series rod, 7 foot 2, medium heavy action. Now, for some reason, I couldn't get them to bite the swim jig. I normally just swim it through there, and they hit it, and I just lay into them. I catch some beautiful fish. Sometimes the best fish of the day are on this white swim jig. But anyway, that's the complement of lures that I'm using, and you can come out here about any time. Okay, I caught a limit of fish today that probably weighs at least at least 15, 16 pounds. It's not bad for two hours. 
So that's the kind of fish you can expect to catch. Early in the morning, that's when it is. The summertime, that's when it is. The grass on Lake Okeechobee, the, the Kissimmee grass on Lake Okeechobee, that's the pattern. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this little segment and we'll show you some other good fishing to come.